There are moments during the day when I just start humming that tune. I know. Oh, uh, it's in the middle of the night for me. Like I'll wake <laughs> up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure, sure. You may notice we're wearing our jerseys again today. You betcha. That's very exciting because the Toronto Marlies kicked off the second round of playoffs on Tuesday night. Yeah, they're doing really, really well. Uh, that, of course, was at Rico Coliseum. Now, things didn't go as planned that night. The Marlies lost to the Abbotsford Heat 3-1, to one, but whatever, right? Exactly. Uh, so what that Abbotsford's now in uh, the best lead? Best of seven with one to zero. Yeah, but it's best of seven. But that is nothing, nothing. The boys take to the ice again tonight right here on Rogers TV at 7 p.m. And we'll be airing all of the home games on here on Rogers TV, so make sure you go to rogerstv.com forward slash Toronto Marley's Hockey and get all the details on game times. And we just learned yesterday that Leafs TV will be covering all the Marley's wow. away games. So be sure to tune in to cheer on your Toronto Marley's. Mm. Whoop, whoop, mm. whoop, 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 whoop. Um, so, the mayor, <laughs> he's always talking. in trouble. Every week he's in trouble. Everybody's talking about the mayor. Poor guy, all he wanted to do was buy a little chunk of land that uh, doesn't seem to be used very much right uh, in, a, in the park behind his house. Put up a fence so that he could keep intruders away. Right. And what happens? So Daniel Dale, the Toronto Star reporter, goes to uh, research it at uh, 7.30 last night. And, and uh, what happens is Rob Ford comes out of the house screaming. So a neighbor apparently called said, there's someone in your backyard. Rob Ford reacts and, and comes outside and says, are you, are you spying on me? Are you spying on me? Waving because who wouldn't, right? Would you find out there's someone lurking in your backyard? Now, the reporter says there's, I wasn't even close to, the, to his backyard. I was around 10 meters away from his fence. So uh, there really was no threat. But someone tells you, hey, there's someone out there with a camera recording stuff then you'd probably get your back up a little bit, right? So I understand why he would come storming out and, and wanting to tell this guy to take a hike. Um, I understand it, because uh, his wife, he's got wife and kids and everything, um, but he, here's the deal, here's my thing on it. I, he's, he is the mayor of Toronto. There's been a lot of potential threats against him, you know, why is he not just signing up for security? Like, just get the security. He should not have run out, out there. He should have a security that runs out there. Well, that's a good point. He probably shouldn't have done that Yeah, himself. because what if it was a real threat, right? <laughs> what if it was a real threat? What if it was a real intruder that was there to do harm? But everyone can understand the emotion behind it, the feeling like, I've got to protect my family. And well, you just, it's like, it's like the lion uh, mother. You, you don't, nothing frightens you at that point because you are in protector mode. Well, I'll tell you what would frighten me is Rob Ford running after me. <laughs> I know, like, this reporter is terrified. I know, he, yeah, he, like some of the things he's saying is just so, he's like, I was very worried, very threatened. <laughs> first, feeling for my life. I'm feeling for my I know. <laughs> well, come on, come on, Daniel Dale. It seems like everybody needs to just uh, take just a simmer deep breath down, and come yeah. down. Yeah, no. Interesting. Um, uh, speaking of Rob Ford, there was free gas. <laughs> okay. Oh, you know Rob Ford, he's always... <laughs> well, yeah, this good. Shell station decided to give away free gas today. I that know. never happens. And each person who managed to get in that lineup between 8 and 9.30 this morning was allowed up to 100 bucks worth. I know, it's um, at Victoria and Gerard. Like, uh, so that would address? fill up most 24 people. 24.98 Gerard. Um, but that only went till 9.30, so unfortunately the time has passed. I would have totally done that. Totally done that. Oh. God, the, last, the only time I get free gas is when I make my own chili. <laughs> but a bang he's here all week, folks. <laughs> We've got a great show today. The author of Chai Tea Sunday is here. Wow. You know, women can relate to this, and men, but uh, mostly women can relate to the story in this book because it features uh, a struggle with fertility at its root. And so many women today struggle with fertility, trying to get pregnant, can't. Uh, mm -hmm. ha it, feels like, uh, it feels like a loss, and you have to grieve that loss yeah, it's, it's before right. you can move on to the next step. And so uh, that's, that was where the, the story starts. And then what happens after that is so uplifting and so uh, life-affirming, but not easy to read because it goes to Africa. We hear all about uh, some of the conditions of the orphanages in, in Africa, mm. and, but it's, a, it's an amazing story, inspired by true events. So we're so thrilled that we've got Heather Clark here today to talk about Chai Tea Sunday. And the chai tea is significant, so we'll talk about oh, that. Oh, okay, interesting. I, well, I love, ch I love chai coffee. 
like a latte. I have to try. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> so you totally get it. <laughs> I so relate to that. I so relate to that. <laughs> and then we're going to the kitchen. Yeah, Barb, what are we cooking? We're cooking a romesco sauce. A romesco sauce. sauce. Is that like yes. a spaghetti sauce? Um, well, it originated as a fish stew, um, but we're using it as a dip and also putting it on fish. Okay. Mm -mm. That's the pizza over there, too. There's pizza over here, too. We're talking asparagus coming into season as well as greenhouses um, readily available. Yum. Asparagus pizza. Yum, yeah. yum, yum. Why not? Okay, so we'll be doing that in the kitchen. Can't wait. And then we're going to clean our rivers by paddling the dawn with the Living City Foundation. So this Sunday, this is, like, I didn't know about it. Um, but there's about 600 participants, and what they're going to do is they're going to paddle down the Don River. It's not nor it's not allowed normally, um, and uh, we'll hear all about that. And it raises awareness of not only uh, the environment and all of that, but it also b gets money so that we can actually help the Don. Mm. I know it's, but it's pretty great. You should see the, all these canoes going down. It's it's incredible. It'll be pretty. Yeah, it's going to be yeah, it'll be a great thing because you're not allowed anyway. So what they have to do is they have to open up the dam. And close the dam so that the water so the water will go through. And apparently, it's like um, size. I don't know if I'm using the right terminology, but a, a three rapid. So it gets pretty, pretty crazy out there. Wow. So yeah, yeah. So you're gonna hear all about that. It's a great event. Christine from Christine's Fitness will show us the meaning of girl power through fitness. Man, she's ripped. And so um, I want a body like that. Who doesn't? And we're gonna have. Uh, bands, we're going to use kettlebells, and we're going to figure it all out. And she designs this for a woman's body, which is important. And then we're going to hear some great music. That's right. We're going to hear from a, a, a couple of guys. They call themselves the Fridge Magnets. <laughs> and I'm going to ask them how that name came about. Uh, but they're kind of in the, like, Simon Garfunkel, that type of uh, vibe. And really, really very talented guys. I have to show you what I saw coming in this morning. Uh, every year, yeah. the uh, Daddy and Mama Goose return, and they set up shop here at the Rogers... Parking, uh, lot. parking lot. I don't know why they come back here, but they do. And Papa Goose is very, very territorial. He's very protective. Look at the little goslings. So goslings. when I slowed down to take a shot, he was like, get the kids and get out of here. And he was telling me what for. He was he was beaking off to oh, me. Oh, look at but them. But look how so cute they are. Cute. Where, like, don't they need to be by water or something? I don't know if there's any water around here. I know. That's what's so weird about it. You think? I thought that they they always put like next to streams and stuff. I always thought they were, but I guess not. And they'll cross streets. They don't care. They don't care. Just People cross the street. Very, very. The world will stop for me. Don't worry. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> I, lo I love their attitude. Uh, but those goslings are so cute. And then they go through that awkward stage where they're really quite hideous. They're all tufty and. And, and gangly like teenagers, and then they turn into those beautiful Canadian geese. Yeah, they're beautiful. Um, the zoo is having a uh, having some issues with the zoo, so like we're moving the the two elephants to pause. Are they going to stay or are they gonna go? Well, going to go? Well, there's a deal breaker. Um, uh, the zoo is asking for all the TB records uh, from pause, all the health records, and pause is saying they don't want to give that. So we'll see. Stay tuned. We'll yeah. figure out what happens with the elephants and chai tea next. Great read. Oh man, if you're a woman, if you, you if this if this hasn't happened to you personally, it's happened to someone you know, I guarantee it. The struggle with infertility is uh, such a delicate subject. Well, that's where this story starts, Chai Tea Sunday by Heather Clark. Wonderful read. It's a real journey, it's an emotional roller coaster, and women seem to really relate to it on so many levels and people say they cry their eyes out. I shed a few tears myself because we've all been there or we've known someone who's been there. Mm -hmm. Why did you write it? Well, thank you for having me and thank you for those kind words. Um, I There are a few reasons that I wrote it. It, it actually really started with the second half of the book, um, which is when she goes to Kenya. And, and she goes to Kenya because she has gone through this struggle and she and her husband had uh, you know, gone through a pretty complicated tragedy and so she goes to Kenya. Uh, I added on the fertility elements in the beginning of the book because I, like so many women, have gone through fertility as well and it's it's tough and it's complicated and at the time I think you 
at least I felt like my husband and I were on an island. And when I decided to write the book, I wanted that to be part of it because I wanted women to know that there's hope, that they're not in it alone, that so many of us have, have gone through it. Well, it's true, because when you're going through it, everyone else around you is getting pregnant, like that. Like that. And so you do think that you're the only one this that's is right. happening to. That's right. So uh, I bet you're hearing back from women saying, thank you, it's nice to know I'm not alone. I am, I am, yeah. It, uh, there's, uh, there's too many women that have gone through it, so. Um, yeah, uh, the second part, uh, which is so after after Nikki goes through the complicated fertility issues, and unfortunately her marriage crumbles um, because it's such a strain. Fertility issues are, are are an enormous strain on a relationship. That's right, and so she decides, feeling emotionally lost because of it, she decides that she's going to accept a volunteer teaching position in Kenya, in a tiny little town called Gong, which is about twenty minutes outside of Nairobi, and really I think the story is about hope because it's about her journey in Kenya and all of the people she meets along the way and how she helps them but but moreover because of what she's gone through how they are able to help her and yeah. how she really goes there thinking she's going to give to these children at the orphanage but ultimately finds that the people of Kenya and in particular the kids give her way more than she could ever give them. Which is such a surprise because they have nothing. And you think, what, what could they possibly be giving me? But you're right, you realize the, the longer you read that she is growing and learning and healing and benefiting from what they are doing for her. That's right, that's right. And you know, I've, I've never been to Kenya, uh, which is an interesting part of this book, uh, but my cousin had been and she, she had gone the first time and when she returned, I couldn't get enough of her stories. And it was not the devastation, it was not the despair, it was not the poverty, of course, too much of that exists, but it was what connected all of these pieces together which was the hope. How, if you've never been to Kenya, how did you write with such clarity? How, did, <laughs> how is it that we could read this and feel like we were there? Thank you for that. Uh, it happened because she, my cousin was, was there and she would actually be in an internet cafe in this tiny little town, 12,000 kilometers away, and she was feeding me the details over email and I would take those details and I would write them into the book. And Just like that? Boom, boom. Well, it was originally it was the details such as uh, what does the dirt feel like outside of your host family's home that I was after. But what happened when she was there is a story started to transpire that we had no way of knowing was going to happen. And so the elements that happen when the main character is in Africa, all of that is true. And she was actually living it in real time. And, you know, it was, it was like tears on a keyboard when I was writing it because there was so much emotion, so much hope, but so much uh, despair as well. And um, it's one of the reasons that it's so important for me to give back because a portion of the proceeds of the book go to an amazing charity called Artbound, uh, which really is an organization that raises funds to build schools for kids in developing nations like Kenya. That was the first place where they built a school, as well as work, they work with Free the Children to wow. provide uh, food, water, medical supplies. So it's an amazing charity. I'm so thrilled to be tied to it and so, so happy that it's all coming together. Why do the children in, in the orphanage mean so much to Nikki, the, the main character? And I guess yeah. that means your, your cousin then. Yes, right? yeah. Why well, do they become so important to her? It's a great question. And in the case of my cousin, that was what took her there, was she was... Uh, wanted to do more. She had she had sponsored children for years, but she wanted to go there and be with the kids. She wanted to laugh with them and to hug them and to give them love. And she speaks about how she's not a teacher, she's not a doctor, she's not a nurse, but she has a lot of love to give. And that was what took her there. And it was that love that shone through her stories uh, when I was talking to her about it. And for Nikki, the main character in the book, that was what she found when she went there. And she found it in the children, and she also found it in her host mother, who is named Mama Boo and is this amazing, wonderful, grounded person who gives her perspective uh, and love and understanding over cups of chai, which is the country's signature drink. So yes, it, the, the tea is very important. It's, it's in the title, but it's, it's really an important element of the story. Yes, it is. And it's, uh, I, I, I've learned, because I've not been there, that it is the signature drink of Kenya. They drink it all day, every day. And you know, the people of Kenya, as I've learned, are just so warm and inviting and they go to each other's homes all the time. There's a part in the book where I talk about how all of the living rooms have tons of couches. It's couches all smacked <laughs> together. But it's because of the hospitality that each home provides to their friends and family. And everybody goes over to one home and they all drink chai and they, they just have so much sharing and so much so many great conversations over that chai. That would drive Glenn, Glenn crazy. <laughs>
<laughs> all the jammed in couches. Uh, we've only got a minute left. You're on a book tour right now, so you're traveling all across Canada, uh, but you will offer to be at a book club meeting. Tell me about that. Yes, I would love to. Uh, I've been to a couple of book clubs so far and it's been so fun. And so if there's a book club out there that would like to pick the book and, and have me join them, I would be happy to join in on the conversation. And there's information on my website, which is heatheraclark.com, where people can go to um, and just send me an email and we can set it up. Fantastic. Thank you. The good news is you have three beautiful children now. I do, yes. But uh, here's a book you need to read. And if you want her at your book club, just give her a call. HeatherAClark.com. Chai Tea Sunday. When we come back, Cooking with Foodland, Ontario. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Fantastic book. Kitchen. We've got the spokesperson for Foodland Ontario, Barb Holland here. Lovely to have you back. Thank you, Val. Nice to be here. What an array of goodies you've brought for us today. Colorful. And, yeah, colorful. And um, we're starting with the, oh, I've already forgotten. Romesco what? sauce. Romesco sauce, which is what? It's um, Spanish in origin, and it started off as really a fish stew. But now, because of the flavors, it can be used for almost anything. Wow. For a dip, we've got it with vegetables or with pita on some grilled uh, trout, Ontario trout, of course. Yes. Fantastic. Simple to make. You can make it a couple of days ahead so that the flavors develop. But there's a few steps. We start with some tomatoes, and I've just taken the cores out. Um, pepper I halved and take the seeds out and garlic, which I've taken the top off. So, so just, very simple uh, prep, that's great. So far, yeah. And so just put some oil on that. Oops, I'm putting too much on. Should be about two tablespoons. And then you put it into about a 400 degree oven for about 30 minutes or until these look blistered, the skin's all blistering and they're nice and tender. A little blackness, is that okay? Yes. So now, whoops, by the magic of television, and this is cold because I didn't turn it on, but essentially I did it ahead so that you can see what it looks like. Okay. And then and when it's, well, you want it just to cool it off to the point where it's really easy to peel all of these off okay. and take the skin off, and then you also squeeze out as much liquid as possible. Okay. And How then, do you deal with the uh, garlic? Garlic, you really just squeeze it out, and it works a little bit better when it's warmer because this is obviously cold. But I've done it all, of Yay! course. <laughs> Another step. And then really it's just a matter of um, using the food processor. So I'm going to take, I've cut up the peppers a little bit. Are these the roasted tomato, uh, the roasted peppers we buy in the jar? Yeah. And you can do it yes. so easily at home. Oh yeah. I mean, and when you see in the August when the bushel baskets are in the markets or, you know, for huge size, you always see people picking them up and taking them home and grilling them at home. And then you can freeze them. Um, oh. Some people do put them in preserves and jars so that way they can have them throughout the rest of the year. Great Very idea. easy to do. But with Greenhouse now, Greenhouse is really readily available. Very good prices in the stores so that you can do it right now. Fabulous. So you've done this step. Okay. You've taken it off and then and um, you turn the oven off and then you put in a day old bread. Um, the bread is, and I think, you know, years ago we used a lot of bread for not just thickening in this case, but also because it had it around, you didn't want to waste it. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about food wastage now. Well, here's the use for some sort of day old bread. You put that and some almonds into a, a pan, a dry pan, put it in the oven while the oven is off and just toast it for maybe about five minutes until you toast the ovens up the bread dries up a little bit. So you've taken this out of the oven, you've turned it off, you've put the bread and the almonds in. Right. Okay, good. Yep, so then you've done that, and then you've essentially throw all of this into the food processor because- There's something about the toasting that really brings out the flavor of the almond, doesn't it? Yeah, and I think almonds too, it also adds some of the thickening. And if you think about it, there's no added fat other than the nuts because the um, oil that's in here really does drain off quite a bit. So that's what the garlic looks like when you've squeezed it out. <laughs> yes, Yum. roasted garlic. <laughs> that's so appetizing. It's appetizing. It's so delicious. Yes. I love it in bean spreads. If you do like a white bean spread, just drain it, rinse it, put that in with some rosemary or thyme and whatever, or love people like it in mashed mm. potatoes. I love the smell of roasted garlic. 
a little bit of, um, in this case, sherry vinegar or red wine vinegar. I also should mention that um, when Foodland does recipes, they often take themes of different countries. So Spain, Spain was this particular one. Almonds are a big crop there. We don't grow them here, but a big crop in Spain because of their more temperate climates. Um, and I've just got smoked paprika, which is very uh, common again. Oh, wow, smoked, smoked paprika. Smoked paprika, it just adds that again, a smoky flavor, a bit of salt. Uh -huh. And if you like a little heat, a pinch of cayenne. So essentially then you just whirl it all together, make a lot of noise, you get the drift. Yeah, you make a lot of noise and do it until um, it looks like that. That looks so fresh. Yes. And you use it as a dip, you say? A dip or a sauce and you can, it's cold right now, but you could warm it up a little bit, just serve it either room temperature, slightly warm, because anything usually tastes a little bit better when it's at a warmer temperature. Do you know what the smell reminds me of? What? Antipasto. Yes, right? yes. And that's what you could use it as. Yep, and again with the pita or whatever. Mmm. Yeah. Fantastic. So it's also just coming into asparagus season, Ontario. You know, it's a fabulous time of the year, you know, because um, we can see things greening all up. And um, you just know that the markets are all starting asparagus is first with rhubarb. Um, and then we'll get into our spinaches and our greens and onions and all of that. So it's carrying on. So certainly look for the logo when you're shopping for Ontario asparagus. Sometimes you see the really skinny asparagus yeah. and sometimes you see really thick asparagus. Does it matter? It's a matter of personal preference. I like it about medium. Right. Um, and you, I'm sure we've shown you the tip before that you take it and you snap it off. Yep, there you go. And there's, yep, when you get it home. When I buy asparagus, first off, it should always be in water in the store so that you know that it's keeping very moist. Okay. And when you get it home, you can either store it with um, paper toweling, wet paper toweling in a bag, or you can put it like a bouquet in a, let's say, a flat dish and then, with water, of course, and put a bag over it just to hold in the moisture. Okay. And um, then just snap it like that, and that sort of takes the tough and the tender part. This you can throw in your compost and whatever. Great. I like grilling it the best, so that's what I did, just a little bit to do it on this pizza. Well, you've already grilled those, okay. I grilled that, and a um, very, very simple uh, thing. You can use regular you know, dough and roll it out if you wish. Turn the oven on. Um, we'll also turn the oven on. I like to use a pan with holes. I find that that gives it, um, you know, this is obviously a pre-baked one. It was a multi-grain one that you just get in the store. So dead simple. Keep it in the freezer or whatever, take it out. And, and the holes will make it crispy? Crispier, because okay. if you just put it in a flat pan, it does tend to get a bit soggy underneath. So simple. Great. Okay, so we're just making pizza. I know you do not, uh, can't tolerate too much cheese, but you can certainly have the room mescal Because I got my pills. No, there you go. Okay, so just, I like to put some cheese in the bottom. We're going to do the asparagus. And in this case, I've just brought, brought You haven't put sliced. any sauce on it. No. Is this a sauceless it's pizza? It's a sauceless pizza. We're using tomatoes instead. The greenhouse, Ooh. lovely greenhouse tomatoes. And I've got a little one. There's some small ones that you can buy. There's cherry ones. And I'm just going to put in some yellow pepper. Any pizza is obviously up to whatever you want to do. If you want to make it, I'm making it vegetarian. Um, but uh, you can add pepperoni or whatever you'd like to. And I'm sure you'd be neater at home. More so essentially cheese. that goes into a, I think it's a 450 degree oven. You can read the package for about six to eight minutes. So pretty. So Look pretty. how colorful that is. And then it comes out. Wow. Oh, you could also put some basil on top, which is why the basil is sitting there to oh. remind me. Yeah, yes. and, cause, and we can have these in our kitchens, right? Oh, absolutely. Sitting on our windowsills. Yes. Well, that's the other thing that's coming out. You can see the, find them in pots so that keep them for a while. And then I usually plant about May 24th or a little bit afterwards, my herbs and all of that. Basil's particularly delicate, so you don't want to, uh, I'm not a gardening expert, but I do plant herbs. I want to, <laughs> can I smell it? Absolutely, bit? yes. Mmm, the smell. And so you would just throw... Throw that on before or afterwards, there. however you particularly like it. When it just comes out of the oven hot, throw it on, then it just um, wilts, wilts just nicely. Yes. Wow. And so you've used this uh, romesco sauce. Yes. With the dip. Yes. And with um, the fish. How did you prepare the fish? I just grilled it. Um, and I like to grill fish when it has the skin on just because it holds it together. So heat up your grill, you know, put it on and just very careful when you're dealing with fish because it will flake and fall apart. But yes. Okay. Mm. And all of these beautiful vegetables are in season right now? Absolutely. Greenhouse is kind of the, we call it the shoulder season, you know, because our, our bounty is just coming now all the way through until September when we have all our squashes and whatever and then into our winter vegetables which are in storage then through these months early months J January usually through till April that's when we have a bounty of greenhouse and um, 
Ontario is actually a bit of a success story when you talk about greenhouse because it's the largest greenhouse industry in North America. Wow. We're very successful at it, yes. That is good news. It is good news. Well, we're going to take a short break, yes. Barb. And when we come back, I'm going to try some of your fabulous pizza. Good. Maybe try a little bit of the fish, too, if sure. that's okay. Absolutely. More with Barb when we return. Stay tuned. Foodland Ontario. Great stuff. We are back with the spokesperson for Foodland Ontario, Barb Holland, talking about these fantastic recipes, Romesco sauce, which is fabulous with uh, as a dip for vegetables. She's also put it on fish, which is fantastic, because we, we all need excuses to eat more fish, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, yeah. And so many of these recipes that you feature are in this great pa uh, pamphlet. That's our spring brochure. It's available in the stores now, so look for it in the produce department. Yes, by all oh, means. Oh, really? It's, right, it's just standing right there in the produce Yes, department. absolutely. Yep. And look, look at these great recipes. So yeah. colorful. And I, this is fabulous, this spinach salad. And look at this. Apple burritos. <laughs> For kids. There's always got to be some kid-friendly recipes in there. Apple burritos. And that looks good, too, with the little things on the stick. Kids love things on a stick. <laughs> so do Popsicles. Husbands. Anything, yeah. And that's the <laughs> sauce I did the made that, that noise during the break mm. so you didn't have to mm. try that so that's the finished sauce it's just just come out of there so it's very nice. I have to try this pizza. Oh good yes. Now I, I'm a I'm not a knife and fork pizza eater I'm a pick it up and shove it in your mouth well, that's pizza good. eater. Well uh, the um when you have the pre-baked crust too they tend to be a little bit firmer so mm. that's just perfect for mm -hmm. that yeah. Mm -hmm. Again very handy very quick you know it takes less time it takes more time to turn the oven on to get preheated to 450 than, than to it does it. to actually make it and so certainly delicious. faster than takeout yeah do this at home your family will love you for it mm. and it's so much better than picking up the phone and calling oh, out for absolutely. pizza isn't it but don't you find most pizzas when you do that taste like cardboard and this way it's fresh exactly yeah. barb it's always a pleasure having you here for more information foodlandontario.ca still to come on the show christine's fitness Shows us the meaning of girl power through fitness. And we're going to have a performance by the Fridge Magnets. But right now, Glenn is with the Living City Foundation. Take it away, Glenn. Thanks, Val. In the heart of Toronto lies the Don River. And every year, once a year, people get the opportunity to row down it <laughs> or paddle the Don. And with me today is Executive Director of the Living City Foundation, David Love. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Glenn. Well, thank you. So Paddle the Dawn, how did it get started and what's the event about? Well, I think the Dawn is, a, is an iconic river in the city, yes. Glen. Um, in fact, a long time ago, I was involved in a funeral for it in 1969. It was a very dirty river a long time ago. And so nature has a way of getting better if you look after it. Okay. And so for the last 19 years, this is the 19th annual Paddle the Dawn. We have some folks who decide to go down the river in, the, in canoes and or kayaks. And they enjoy going down the river and just experience experiencing a wilderness river in the middle of Toronto. Now you get about 600 people participating. 300 in boats, that. about 300 boats, two to a boat normally, and they go down the river from about uh, anybody who's going to anywhere near the dawn at the brickworks or even on the parkway. If you have a look over between uh, 8 a.m. and about 2 p.m. on Sunday, you'll see some folks, voyageurs, going down that <laughs> river. Now normally the, the dawn isn't right, or I don't even know the right terminology. There's not enough water in it. There's not enough water in it. So yeah. what do you do to actually Well, the Conservation happen? Authority that actually puts on this event, for whom the Living City Foundation kind of raises money. Um, we opened the dam at to G. Ross Lord Park. Up oh. at, um, the, the, there's a big dam up there. So we just let enough water in the river so folks can actually, by the time about 8 o'clock comes by, the, the water has come down far enough so they can put the boat in the, in the river and go down. There's a couple of portages. They have to take the boat out. We've got helpers to help that happen. So And it ends up at the Keating Channel. Now, the, now, it turns into somewhat aggressive water, doesn't it? At the very beginning, Glenn, there's a bit of a white water, and, and we've had the odd person go over there. My chair over my board went over a couple of years <laughs> ago and lost his wallet and his camera. So. Oh, dear. Now, who can participate in this? Well, it, there's, two, there's two types. There's individuals who get to uh, do it, and they, uh, they kind of reserve online. That ends up 
selling out in about six hours in early March. Wow. And then there's a corporate event. We, we try to get some corporate teams down and corporations take, it's called the Manulife Corporate Challenge, the Manulife Paddle of Dawn Corporate Challenge. We get corporations to take a team down and they um, get a team to go on the boat and they raise a little bit of money and go down the river. Yeah, we're looking at some of the, the pictures that were online and I guess the, yeah. uh, um, some, of those, some of those teams are there. Yeah, they, 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 they have a really good time, Glenn. It's a, it's a great event. Now, do you need to own a canoe to participate? Or? No, actually, we do have canoes. The corporations, actually, they get the canoes given to them. So corporate teams, we actually provide them with canoes. There are canoes, if people get us early enough, we can provide them for people. But actually, most people, it wouldn't surprise you, bring their own boats. Really? Oh, yeah. Most people, well, most people have got their own canoes. They take them up to the cottage and, and canoe somewhere else. But the first canoe of the season sometimes is the first Sunday in May down the Don River. Now, I'm a bit of a chicken, especially when it comes to water. <laughs> If, if someone like me wanted to actually watch or participate, how can, how can that happen? Well, any, you can watch anywhere, anywhere, anywhere along the river. Okay. I mean, you can, it actually, all so those, bridge, so all those all bridges open. that go down the Don, we get, we've always seen people stand at the river and watch them go down. The Keating Channel, there's a bit of a party at the very end. That starts from about 10.30 and runs until about 2 on Sunday. Um, but people can see these folks going down the river anywhere along the Don at, uh, on Sunday. Now, is, is it safe? So, like, what are some of the precautions that people Oh, it's be very taking? safe. The, the Toronto Safety, the harbour guys are there, the police are there. It's a very safe. They have to have safety gear. They won't even let you on the river unless you've got the right safety gear, like uh, ropes and, and obviously, uh, flotation devices and stuff like that. Right. We don't fool around with the safety, Glenn. It's really important to be safe. Oh, yeah. We don't want any problems there, no. for sure. No, no, no. Now, let's talk about the Living City Foundation a little bit. Tell us what okay. that's all about. Well, I think it's, a, it's, it's interesting, Glenn. Toronto is, and the Don's a good example, Toronto is a vibrant, wonderful city, as we yeah. all know, and you guys more than anybody know that. But Toronto also harbors some spectacular nature. We have in this city mostly ravines, like the Don. Right. Uh, and those ravines, like the Rouge and the Don and the Humber, they end up being almost funnels to the boreal forest for migrating birds at this time of year especially by the wow. way and so the living city foundation is here to try and raise money for people who recognize that this city is actually a vibrant city right. and also a place where nature thrives and if you can nature and people live together in some kind of harmony for the benefit of both right that's what the living city foundation is about well i believe that i believe that it's I, we absolutely need we need to have the nature and we need to look after it uh, and cities. more and more people now, Glenn, as you know, now we know that nature just isn't nice. Nature's actually really good for us. It's very good and for getting us. getting out yeah. in nature, there's a doctor out in Burlington now who gives a prescription for people to go out for a walk in the forest if they feel kind of, hey, doc, I'm stressed, give me some pills. And the doctor says, no, 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 you just need to get into the forest and go for a walk because that's what you really need to do to just chill out. Well, actually, for sure, because, yeah, nature is a calming thing. Nature's good for us, Glenn, and, and the city's got lots of it. Now, the, um, the events raised a considerable amount of money over the years. Um, how, much, how much have we raised today? And almost $300,000, and we, we, we have a goal of raising almost 100000 on Sunday. We may, we may get there. We'll, we'll work at it. And the, and the money goes to wonderful restoration projects. We plant some trees, pull invasive species right in the Don River. And actually, part of the proceeds go to send some kids in the city who otherwise would not get a chance to go to an overnight educa outdoor education center up in Lake St. George, which is... Close oh. to the dawn. Wow. Wow, that's incredible. Now, the, um, the event itself is a lot of fun, too, right? So whether you're participating in it or whether you're watching it, it's, it's a lot well, it's of fun. Well, it's a riot. The corporate teams especially, Glenn, come off the river and have a really good time. It's just very enervating. You're in the middle of the city, and yet you're in, you're in a river. And for all the world, at certain ports of it, at least, it's like being in Algonquin Park. Now, the, 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 the parkway is buzzing next door to you, but right. sometimes I actually close that down. And when that happens, you're sort of silently going down the river. And people come off the river and say, I can't believe you can do this in the city. I, well, you know what? I, driving up the Don Valley Parkway when it's clear is is one of the nicest drives in the city. Well, the I can't it's imagine, a, actually, what the experience is. It's a beautiful valley. Down. We all know the Don Valley is a yeah. beautiful valley. So no, there's no doubt about that. Well, um, yeah, good luck. It's on this Sunday. It's, it's this Sunday, May the 6th, and next Sunday it'll be May the 5th. <laughs> it's, every, it's the first Sunday of May, and next year, of course, Glenn's our 20th, and we kind of, kind of hope to have a couple of special events to mark the 20th anniversary. Well, congratulations. That's a and great Thank you for giving us the time to talk. Thank you for uh, joining us today. Okay. For more information, go to paddlethedawn.ca. Up next, Val's getting in shape with Christine's Fitness. Yeah, that's great.
We've got the owner of Christine's Fitness, Christine. Hi. Hi. How are you, Val? I am so glad that you're here because Great. I look at you and you're such an inspiration with that amazing body. Thank you. We can be strong our entire lives, right? That's right. Okay, Absolutely. What's, what's the key? And why, why do we want to do that, first of all? Well, first of all, you want to have yourself in good shape so that you can do the things that you want to do in life. You want to be healthy. You want to have energy. You want to sleep well. You just basically want to enjoy life. So working out is the way to do it. And I find nowadays what happens with a lot of people, you get up in the morning, you eat breakfast, you're all crunched up. You go to, then you're getting into the car, you're driving, you're all crunched up again. So you're, you're becoming like a pretzel. And then, then you, you sit at your desk. That, you sit at the desk and you're like this again. We need to open up. So I'm going to do some band work with you today, okay. show you. So anybody that's out there that's sitting at a computer a lot, you need to get up and you need to walk around. So I'm going to hand you a nice band over here. And I'll show you what you what need to do. What are these made of? These are uh, they're called the resistance uh, therabands. Okay, are they So you can do a lot of them? different exercises with them. So first of all, always stand at a, basically your feet are shoulder width apart, holding your abdominal muscles. Mm -hmm. You're going to take your band and you just want to stretch out. So just stretch right out. That's it. Take a little bit more resistance. So tighten it up. Yeah, tighten up a bit. Stretch. That's it. Whoa. Now we're working our back area, which is really good. Do about 10 reps. So it's about three. Oh. Okay, because right. I want you to feel it. You're working all the small muscles in the body. Okay, another four do times. I, do my arms One. have to be straight? Yeah, keep them straight because you're going to get a Her. better pull that way. Okay, good. Now bring it above your head. Keep your abs very tight. Keep the abs tight. Bring it down. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Good. Keep the arms straight. Arms straight. Oh. See, now what this allows us to do is use oh. all the little muscles in the body, which is basically what we want to do, because we never get to use those muscles basically with regular free weights. This is more challenging than doing it with the machine. That's right. That's right. Now, the next one, put your left hand right by your, uh, your hip. Hold the band at the top end. Stretch out all the way out, but keep this arm completely straight. This arm is going to stay straight. That's it. Now, push out. Good. Now you're going to feel that right into your shoulder area. I do. I feel it in the back of my arm. And my Good. Now, now, I have a tendency, and I know a lot of other people do, to fire this up. So what you want to do is you want to relax your shoulders. A lot of times when people work out, they're bringing their shoulders yeah. right to their ears. You want to keep that down. Now, this is getting all the blood pumped into your shoulder muscles. This is a great exercise for summer with the nice little tank tops and the little black dress. Try the other side. Excellent. All the way up. And My tongue down. does that every time. Good. Good. Now I'm going to give you another one. Put that underneath your feet. Now this is going to work shoulder area. When you work out, always engage the abdominal muscles. Feet a little wider apart. The wider apart you go, the harder it's going to be. Now I want you to bring it into a lateral side, both arms at oh. the same time. Straight up. Good. Oh, Let's boy. go for about 10 reps because you have to really feel this. Two. Good. Tighten up the abdominal muscles. Three. Good. Four. These are exercises that I do in my Christine's called No BS Group Training. And you know what I like? I like that you work women hard. 30 minutes, and that's all we need is 30 minutes two to three times a week. You work them hard for we, 30 minutes. Minutes, nonstop. Then, we get cardio, we get our abs, we get our back, we get chest, we get all the major muscle groups. But there's no Now I want you to out, stay gonna, up there mm. and just pulse for 10 times. What? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Excellent. Now, right from there, go into what we call a bicep curl. This is a hammer bicep curl. <coughs> Just hold it, band straight up. I have four more minutes of this. There we go. <laughs> Squeeze it up and down. Squeeze. Now we do all these different type of exercises She's in our in group heels. training. <laughs> yeah. Up. Good. And you call this a hammer curl. This is a hammer curl. Now stay up there, Val, and just pulse one time, one alarm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other side, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now together, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now that's our warm-up exercises that we do in our group training. And our group training basically is 30 minutes. That's all it is. Which is great, because you go Excellent. hard and then you know you're going to be done. It's nonstop. Why do we want more muscle, Christine? We want more muscle because more muscle burns more calories, and especially for women, for osteopenia or osteoporosis. You want to prevent that, so we do need to do weight training. We the need weight-bearing exercises. grinds to a halt, it seems. That's right. Right around 40. 
Well, it won't if you're working out. Uh -huh. So what your trick is, is that you want to exercise that two to three times a week and you want to incorporate cardio with weight training, which you can do all that in a 30 minute program. Really? And how many times a week? Two to three times per week. Uh, that's doable. It is. What about our legs? Oh, we're going to be doing some uh, kettlebell exercises. All right, let's bring it on. Well, bring it on. Here we go. Here's kettlebell over here. Okay. Now, kettlebells burn nine times more calories than the regular free weight. Cool. And the reason why is because we're using more muscle fibers. So I'm just going to show you, in, we're going to go into a bicep curl and then into a shoulder press and then back down. Now we're working our biceps, we're working our shoulders and we'll do that about 10 reps on each side and then we'll pick up a, uh, another kettlebell and we can actually do it with two kettlebells so we're doing it together. So you're going to burn more as well. So this is working your uh, biceps and your shoulders and always tuck in the abs throughout your whole workout, tuck in the abdominal muscles. It without just doesn't doing... look like I am. But I... <laughs> you are. Okay, now let's take it down. We're gonna bring it up and then we're gonna twist up. So what I want you to do with your hand is keep it on the side, take it back down, up, twist up, perfect. Now because of the twist, we're working our obliques Hold in your abdominal muscles. You don't have to do one sit-up. If you're taking care of your abdominal muscles throughout the whole workout, perfect. My now, chiropractor husband will be happy to hear that. There They're you not go. Good for your back. Right? No, it's not. Okay. Now another we do is called the uh, kettlebell swing. Now with this exercise, you're not using your arms at all. What you're using completely is your quads and your hamstrings and your butt. Straight up. That's it. Straight up, hand outside, the other hand on the outside. Let it come up into the perfect. That's it. Unbelievable. So this is a leg and butt. This is a leg and butt exercise. It is not an arm exercise. All the way down. Straight up. Straight up. Okay. Now I'm going to give you another one. You're going to hold the kettlebell. We have about 30 seconds. Okay. There we go. Feet apart. Christine'sFitness.ca for all the all details. All the way down, as low as you can go. Your Dot butt com. almost hits. Now when you come oh. up, push with your heels oh. and push with your quads. Okay. All the way down. Push. Christine'sFitness.com. There when we, we go. come back, performance by the fridge magnets. There we go, Val. 30 minutes. That's all you need. Three times a week. All the oh. way up. Wow. Okay. Oh, one more. You rock. And up. But I hate you right now. Excellent. Well, it's one of my pet peeves are fridge magnets, but in this case, I'm actually a fan of fridge magnets. Join me in, with uh, Rick Levine and Mark Friedman from the Fridge Magnets. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Hi, thanks for having us. So um, you also have a company called Icebox. So let's start with that. How did you, how did you guys get started together? Together. Well, we met as uh, contestants on Survivor. Oh, no, really? <laughs> no, we were not actually. But uh, it's a great story, though. It would be a great story, yeah. Why don't you tell, tell a story of how we met? Well, we were introduced by mutual friends uh, who said, Mark, you should meet Rick. Rick, you should meet Mark. We got together, went to a beautiful park on a beautiful uh, Sunday afternoon, and just started playing each other's songs. Oh, wow. And clicked. And it just, and, and it just, how long ago was that? Because that's quite, you guys have almost, been around. Yeah, it's almost yeah. 15 years ago. You, yeah. uh, I, he would sing a song, I throw in a harmony, I would play a song, you throw in a chord, and the next thing you know, we had a repertoire up, yeah. up and running. Yeah, that's incredible. And you guys have uh, performed over 300 times. Like, th yeah, yeah, well, At least. well over 300 times. Yeah. Yeah. What's the highlight of your career so far, aside from, you know, today? <laughs> yeah, aside from today, yeah. wow. <laughs> um, I, we, what, we played the McMichael, uh, we oh, wow. played uh, the Canadian uh, Film Center. Our last CD we, we recorded with Bruce Coburn's band. Oh, that's yeah, incredible. Well, that's that was pretty good. cool. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah. Now, what will you be playing for us today? Well, uh, we're going to be playing a song called What's Wrong. And uh, because, uh, no, it's just called What's Wrong. Oh, you yeah. should know this. You, you, you're right. <laughs> uh, and basically, it's a therapeutic song. 
Now, what, you, uh, now I, I compared uh, therapeutic. Therapeutic, that's true. I Pe compared your, your sound to sort of that Simon Garfunkel thing. Would you, would yes. you agree with that? Yeah. Absolutely. I, m m most people describe us as a cross between Simon and Garfunkel mm -hmm. and the Smothers Brothers. Oh, OK. Because in, in concert, we're very alive, and we have this banter that goes back and forth. We never know what we're going to do, to tell you the truth, you know, because it's, it's, uh, it, we impro improvise. You know, we look at each other. We throw each other at chords. We mm. play songs we didn't practice. Yeah, we may have a set list <laughs> in front of us, but then just decide to do other stuff. So, yeah. so on, in this in this performance, we we may not really know what's going to happen. <laughs> we have no idea what's going to happen. We okay. may not know what's going to happen. <laughs> okay, well, I'm dying to see what happens. Okay. So, I'm going to turn over the mics to you, and Great. then uh, we're going to hear what's wrong. Okay, Ex absolutely. <clears throat> Slide back in here. One, two, one, two, three. What's wrong with me? Maybe my intensity. What's wrong with me? Could it possibly be what's wrong with me? I lost my virginity So long ago I want to scream Scream so loud I drown out the crowd What's wrong with me? I can't get no sleep at night What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? I call my doctor for advice. Hello, doctor. Yeah? This here's Rico. Hey, Rico. Hey, doctor. <laughs> well, tell me what's the matter with you, boy. Well, my head's on overload. I'm about to explode. I'm heading down a dangerous road. Me. Say it again, what's wrong with me? Rico, yeah doc, don't hang up boy, I won't tell me more, I'm not looking to do no harm along the way, you know I lost my charm, if I don't raise the alarm, I'll be sent down to the farm, what's wrong with me? Of some serious hell It's getting hard to conceal The way I feel Somebody tell me please What's the deal? What's, What's wrong with me? Say it again What's wrong with me? Rico? Yeah, Doc? Don't hang up Give me more <laughs> yeah, it kind of happens every now and again. That's a great song, great song. Now, is that that's on your latest CD? Uh, that is not on the latest CD. Oh, uh, hot off the press? It, it's hot off the presses. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be playing a house concert tonight, in a, not tonight, a Saturday night in the Scarborough Bluffs. If anybody's interested, they can go to our website, uh, get in contact with us, and we can give them directions and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah now explain what a house, a house uh, 
a party is? Well, it's it's more of a house concert because okay. what happens is there are people out there who are very uh, supportive of live and local talent and right. also talent that comes across Toronto, uh, Toronto and Ontario. Uh, and they open up their homes, of anywhere from 20 to sometimes 45 people. Wow. And it's a private concert and everybody is sitting and listening and very attentive and whatnot. And it's a great experience because people want to be there to listen, right. you know, as opposed to some of the other places we played like, uh, you know, coffee shops where it's us and a barista. The espresso machine. And an espresso machine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the middle of a tender, you know, yeah. very yeah. Uh, emotional song. It's know. nice and intimate and unplugged and uh, it's, uh, they're really, really uh, enjoyable for us to play. I bet you it's enjoyable for the audience too, because then not only do they get to listen to great music, but they, they also get to meet new people. Exactly, yeah. right. they, they, and it's kind of like a networking thing. They meet us. We sign. Uh, we sign copies of the CD. We, you know, just get to know who the audience is. That's what it really is nowadays: is building a relationship with the people who come see you. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, before we've got a, uh, just about thirty seconds left, but Tom, Icebox also does public speaking and things like that. That's true. We do music business seminars. Okay. Uh, there is one uh, series taking place on a, a website called. How, how, P O W H O W dot com. Okay. Uh, and it's an interactive classroom. Ah, oh, fantastic. Well, thank you very, very much for being thank here. You. I still don't know what's wrong with me, but <laughs> for, for more information. We'll you, talk to you about it afterwards, doesn't work. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> for more information, go to iceboxmusic.ca. And now, here's one of our volunteers, Lake, on with your community events. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lake on, and here are your community event listings. See the best feature films documentaries and shorts from around the world on themes of Jewish culture and identity. The Toronto Jewish Film Festival starts today and continues until Sunday, May 13th at venues across the city. For a listing of screenings and to find out more, click on tjff.com. The Malvern Art Department is hosting its first ever student art show today. See final independent studio projects from grade 12 students, as well as some of the best work from students from grades 9 to 11. There will be refreshments and live music too. For more information, head to schools.tdsb.on.ca slash Malvern. The Lake Shorts International Short Film Festival starts tomorrow and continues until this Saturday. Now in its second year, the festival helps to foster the arts of community in South Etobicoke while showcasing the passion and spirit of independent film. Visit lakeshorts.ca for details. And there you have it, your community events for Thursday, May 3rd. Now back to you guys. Thanks, Lake on. Right on. Hey, great show tomorrow. Yep. Members of the Canadian Soccer League are stopping by. That's right. We're going to be cooking with the owner of Cookery Do. Cool. We're going to fight poverty with Life for Health. And we've got Mother's Day gift ideas with Teresa Quick. Mother's Day is coming up. Oh, my goodness. Uh, support music with Music Mondays. Yeah. All sorts of great stuff. We had a great show today. I'm so happy to learn about cleaning up the dawn. I know. Isn't that a great, great event? Yeah. yeah. So get down there. Bring your canoe. Get your, go, go, go down there. Or your blow-up raft or whatever it is. <laughs> Row, row, row your boat. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. See ya.